Sometimes your armchair critique moves the auto manufacturers make. In 97, GM dropped Impala from its roster. If your favorite team dumped a legend, you'd probably have a few choice words. But in 2000, Chevy brought back the Impala to replace the Lumina. No offense to Hot Rod Lumina fans. Some cars just suit their owners. When the guys at AMC told me that our 64 Impala project suited me, I took it as a compliment. Maybe it was all the burgundy and the sil silver. <laughs> now this looks, this looks very slick. The main goal was to get a complete roller by the end of the day. Yours truly and Sal actually got out there and turned a wrench for the first time in quite a while. Don't worry, it's like building a bike. We started by adding some of the rear components that were already started, uh, the rear suspension, airbags. It was, uh, it was fun to get out for the day and do it, uh, to uh, get back in the shop and, and do some assembly. Uh, but I'm so uh, rusty at it that uh, I don't know if I uh, did the shop any good. From failing hands, we pass the airbags, while Brett slugs it out with an engine hoist to position it over the chassis. We normally put the engine in with the cherry picker on jack stands. It makes the chassis a lot more stable so you don't have something, you know, moving around on the lift. Well, I decided to get a little creative and thought I could eliminate some of the problems involved with that and actually ended up creating more problems. In hindsight, yes, we are on the road to an awkward situation. It just hasn't been noticed yet. I decided to put the engine in first. The chassis was very front heavy, so we had a whole balancing act going on with the chassis as we were trying to lift the rear end into place. So um, the two heaviest guys had to sit on the back of the frame. <laughs> Sometimes you like to help a guy out when he has a problem. Other times it's fun just to sit back and enjoy the pain. Because the chassis was on the lift and we had to have it at a certain height to be able to balance it, we had this whole snowball effect going on. Uh, we actually had to raise the rear end, which was fully assembled already, uh, into the chassis. Now, that doesn't sound like that much, but this rear end's got to weigh, I don't know, 300 pounds or something like that. So, uh, you know, trying to muscle it into place with, you know, our weakling muscles isn't necessarily the best idea. This is not how Curry or my chiropractor recommends installation of a 9-inch rear end. Even Benpack has other ideas. We went to install the front drive shaft first, which theoretically should be okay. Um, got it all in there, things are looking great, you know. Uh, anyhow, go to put the rear one in and realize that it wasn't going in. So we ended up pulling the whole system out and assembling it on the bench. We realized that there's a cork seal inside the splines of the secondary shaft uh, that was kind of holding it up. So we took that apart, assembled it on the bench, and then assembled it all as one unit into the car. At this pace, we could have more than a rolling chassis. If we tried, we could have a running chassis. We only need a couple of key things. This would be four of them. The wheels we selected were actually selected by Classic Industries, which is 17-inch American Racing Salt Flat Specials. They use the mag finish centers. We got our BF Goodrich tires in, and uh, we actually had them mounted and balanced and delivered uh, by Inland Wheel Center who actually even did us a favor and installed them for us. We went to mount up our wheels and tires, and actually only on the driver's side for some odd and apparent reason, the caliper was striking the inside of the wheel. It was an easy fix. We ended up filing the caliper. The wheel rolls great now. Everything's all hunky-dory again. If you like the look of this chassis, get a good look now, because the next time you see it, there'll be a 64 Impala on it. <laughs>